What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for machine learning and I was a little bit tempted to say data science because we're now starting out with something new, the tutorial series on machine learning, making machines learn, teaching a computer how to learn based on data. This is what we're going to do in this series and today's video is the introduction episode. So today we're going to talk about the basics and fundamentals of machine learning, uh, questions like what is machine learning, what types of machine learning are there, and what libraries are we going to need for this tutorial series? So let us get into the explanations. Now, as we all know, I am a professional content producer, and that's the reason why I only use professional tools to illustrate my concepts. And therefore, I use Paint today because Paint is a very professional tool to do that. Uh, no, seriously, I'm going to use Paint here because I don't see the value of creating a uh, fancy PowerPoint presentation around machine learning, what it is and, and all that. So I'm going to use Paint because I think I can explain it better in Paint and you'll learn much more in Paint. And it's also more authentic to me. Uh, so let us start by defining what machine learning is not. And machine learning is not a machine learning from a human, even though this might seem uh, that it might seem that this is the case. But when a human, an expert, for example, a medical expert or a physicist or a finance expert, tells a computer what to do in specific cases, this is not machine learning, this is not artificial intelligent. Uh, as a result of that, of course, the computer may beha uh, behave intelligently. So if this is a stockbroker um, and he tells the computer what to do in which situation and the computer then does that, um, we might consider that intelligent action but in fact, it's not artificial intelligent because the intelligent action was just the uh, expert, human expert, telling the computer what to do. So this is not machine learning. This is not what we understand when we talk about machine learning. Machine learning is having data. This should represent data. I know it looks ugly, but let's ignore that for a second. We have some kind of data and we just take that data and feed it into the machine, into the uh, machine learning model, and then as a result of that, the computer or the machine knows what to do. So an example for that would be to just uh, read in a couple of uh, CAD images. So images of a uh, cat. Oh, God, that looks terrible. Uh, and also images of dogs, for example. I'm not going to, do uh, to draw a dog right now. Um, but just taking different images of cats and dogs and putting them into the machine learning model. And of course, we always say, okay, this one is a cat, the next one is also a cat, the next one is a dog, so that the computer recognizes what does a cat look like and what does a dog look like. Uh, and then only as a result of that, we then feed in some images that the computer has never seen before. And in the end, it tells us, okay, this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a cat, and so on. So basically what we're doing is we're defining a mathematical machine learning model, putting in some so-called training examples, so pictures of cats and dogs that are already classified as cats and dogs, putting them into the machine learning model. And as a result of that, this model shall be able to classify unknown images of new cats and dogs. Um, so a human, there, there's no human telling the computer what to do here. It's no, there's no human that tells the computer a cat is a animal that has uh, pointy ears or something like that. The computer figures these out, uh, these features out by himself. So this is basically what machine learning is. So now that we roughly know what machine learning is, let's talk about the different types of machine learning. And I'm going to write them down for you here, and I hope that does not look too ugly. And we're going to talk about the three major types, which are supervised learning, so supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and the so-called reinforcement learning. Uh, so these are the three major types of machine learning that we have, and we're going to talk about uh, all of them right now. So let us start with the left one, the supervised learning. Now, a classic supervised learning example would be the one with the cats and the dogs. Whenever we have a machine learning model, and I'm going to use this uh, computer here as a model, so this represents the machine learning model. Whenever I have, <clears throat> sorry, whenever I have uh, data that is already classified or uh, data that already contains the solution, or the desired outcome, it is a supervised learning example. So 
it is called supervised learning because we're giving supervision to the model. We're telling him or we're telling the model, this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a dog, this is a cat, and so on. So we're supervising him. Uh, it, sorry, I'm always referring to the computer as uh, a masculine one. Uh, we're always giving supervision to the computer uh, by saying, look, what you see here is a dog. Or what you see here, if we take a different example of handwritten digits, what you see here is an eight. What you see here is a seven. What you see here is a three and so on. So we're giving the supervision to the model so that it figures out what to look at. And this is supervised learning, basically just telling the model what to do and then, of course, expecting the results. So when we have images of cats and dogs, so let's say these are cat. oh my God, that looks ugly, uh, cats and dogs, uh, if we feed these images with the classifications in and then we feed some new images in, what we want is we want also a result that says cat or doc. Uh, now with unsupervised learning, this is a little bit different. With, with unsupervised learning, we provide data that is not classified. For example, we could um, look at a coordinate system and have the heights and let's say this is the height and the weight of people. And now what we could do is we could just feed in all the data points. And this data, these data points could be, I'm going to use a different color right now, uh, green. These data points can be everywhere. So we can have some here, we can have some here, we can have some here, and so on. So these data points are just there and they don't, uh, they are not classified. So we don't say these are the overweight people, these are the skinny people and so on. We just say these are the people and we're now telling our model, find some clusters, for example, or find some patterns. And the model will see, okay, here I see a cluster. I cannot tell you that these are the overweight people, but they, uh, these people are one group, one cluster. Uh, and this is another one and this is another one if you allow for three clusters, for example. If you say, okay, only uh, I only allow for two clusters, you could say, okay, we have uh, these and these, for example. Okay, not exactly these here. So this would be unsupervised learning, just providing the examples. And of course, as a result, we don't get um, labels like cat or dog or overweight or something like that. We just get cluster one, cluster two. And of course, if I have a new data point here, let's pick an orange one and it's placed here and I have the cluster, uh, clusters from before. So this is one cluster. Of course, I know that this data point also belongs to this cluster. But um, I don't know that this cluster is, for example, the cluster for overweight people. I can just figure that out myself as a human, but the model doesn't tell me that. Um, if we take the classification example of supervised learning in this case, what I would do is I would say, okay, these are all green dots when, while training the example. This is not something the model does, this is something that I do. I give this example to the model um, and I just say, these are the overweight people, for example. They have a lot of weight and a very uh, small height. So these are the overweight people. Uh, they have, uh, they're all red, for example. And I say that to the model. So I'm supervising the model and telling him that these are, or telling it, sorry, that these are the red, um, <clears throat> the red people, the overweight people. Then I could say we have the blue people that are the skinny people. So I can say, okay, this is blue. And then we have the small and uh, skinny people, the green points. And then I have a new data point. Uh, let's pick, I don't know, uh, gray. And then I have a new data point and the model can then tell me that this is an overweight person. This would be the supervised example, but if I don't use these classifications, it's just unsupervised and I look for patterns. So now let us get to the last one, which is reinforcement learning. And reinforcement learning is a entirely different uh, type of machine learning. Reinforcement learning works with agents and environments. For example, what I could have is an environment like this, just a ground and my agent is a person. And the goal for that person is to jump as high as possible. This is a classic example of that. And uh, of course, this agent is a computer or some programmed thing, some programmed entity, and it has control over certain things. For example, it can bend its knees and it can uh, crouch, it can try to jump, it can do different things. 
but we don't tell uh, this entity what to do to perform an action. We just reward it for doing the right action. So basically, we start with random action. and Maybe this person will uh, walk left and right and, uh, and something like that. And what we do here is we say, okay, for walking left and right, you get zero points or something like that. Um, if you crouch onto the ground or if you uh, go down onto the ground, uh, you'll receive minus two points because we want you to move up. So uh, as soon as the person jumps a little bit, we say, okay, this is a score of 0 0.5 points, for example. And if uh, this person jumps pretty high, we can say, okay, this is a score of 1.75 points. And because of these rewards and punishments, this agent learns what to do. So we're rewarded for jumping, so it will al always adapt and train itself so that it jumps higher. So this is reinforcement learning, um, has a lot to do with genetic algorithms and evolution. So this is a very interesting field, but these are basically the three different types of machine learning. So last but not least, let's talk about the libraries that we're going to need for this tutorial series. And in this video, we're going to install two of them, scikit-learn and TensorFlow. We're going to use these two libraries uh, for this tutorial series. Uh, scikit-learn is for all the traditional machine learning algorithms like uh, basic k neighbors classification, regression, support vector machines, clustering and all that. So these are the basic uh, fundamentals and traditional uh, elements of machine learning and then we have TensorFlow for deep learning and neural networks later on. Uh, so we're going to install both of them and we're going to run CMD for that and activate the Anaconda environment. If you don't have one but you want one you can check out my data science tutorial series. Uh, there I explain how to set up Anaconda properly. So now I activated my environment and I'm going to type pip install scikit learn. This is how you install scikit-learn. So you just, um, this is the library, as I said, for the traditional machine learning algorithms, uh, regression, clustering, classification, and so on. And I'm going to get back to you as soon as the installation is finished. All right, there we go. And now we're going to install TensorFlow as well. Notice, however, that TensorFlow sometimes produces problems if you're using the latest version of Python, because sometimes uh, when a new Python version is released, TensorFlow is not yet compatible with it. So uh, maybe TensorFlow is not available if you're using the latest version. So you maybe want to downgrade the version to the uh, second latest. But if it works, you just type pip install TensorFlow to install TensorFlow on your machine. And again, I'm getting back to you after the installation. All right, the installation is done and we can now proceed with the coding in PyCharm. We're going to use PyCharm for this tutorial series as well. Of course, you can choose any uh, development environment that you want or that you like. You can use Spider, you can use Jupyter Notebook, whatever you want. But I'm going to use PyCharm for this tutorial series as well. And now we have uh, installed all the packages that we're going to need. So that's it for the introduction into the machine learning series with Python. In the next video, we're going to start out with some coding. I think we're going to start with linear regression. Let's see. But definitely, we're not going to do more theory. We're going to get into the coding in the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something. If so, hit the like button to support this channel. Also, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye. Thank you.